I remember this Asian girl, and yeah. she was little, and she played the hell out of all the things <laughs> you are with no accompaniment. And I was like, I'm giving up the saxophone. <laughs> That's Grace Kelly. She is an amazing saxophone player who also sings, dances, composes, and probably does a whole list of other things really well that I don't even know about. We met up last month at the NAMM show and discovered together that I had actually seen her perform with the legendary Lee Konitz when she was only 13 years old. I've known Lee Konitz since I was 13 years old, and we made a record I, This together. is making me think. I went and saw Lee Konitz in maybe 2005 or six. Yeah, where? And there was a young girl in New York City. Is that it's possible? Po it's possible. Would you have played um, All the Things You Are? Yeah. Okay. Well, Bob yeah. Mover brought me down there. Oh my gosh, I remember, yeah, I remember seeing his, Bob Mover. In his little, it's like this little- Jazz gallery? Yeah, yeah, jazz gallery. You walk that up the stairs. That was the first ever performance that <laughs> he invited me. I had met him just a bit before that, maybe weeks before, yeah. and, I, and that was my first meeting with him. And then he said, hey, I'm doing this gig at the jazz gallery. Come, come sit in and play with it. That was me. I mean, That's I was totally awesome. Man, I was <laughs> so nervous. All right, she's nervous. Out of you my were mind. like twelve, and you went up and played uh, all the things you are, but with no accompaniment. It was just duet. Wow. That that was an incredible night. I just remember it so well, and also just you know getting to play a duet with Lee Konitz. And there's nobody who's more of a masterful improviser in my mind. I mean. He lives, breathes, spontaneous improvisation. Finding out that that little girl I had seen performing so many years ago was now my guest for an interview was pretty cool, but it also helped to make sense out of why Grace is so good at everything she does. Plays alto saxophone. She's 14 years old. I'm gonna break your fingers. Her name is Grace Kelly. <laughs> I'm glad Phil didn't break your fingers, Grace, but I'm sure he's probably not the only saxophone player who's considered it. Let's listen to a little bit of how Grace sounded back then. was a great moment in saxophone history as far as I'm concerned. My background actually from when I was really little was in Broadway and in acting and dancing way before the saxophone and in singing. And my dreams when I was six years old was to become a Broadway actress. Now once the saxophone came into the picture when I was 10 and jazz came into the picture, I got the total jazz bug and, and that stuff kind of took a back seat. And so now, um, I really think about what I do uh, within music, within sax, dancing, whatever, is uh, the art of storytelling. I love that. The art of storytelling. Thinking of musical performances as though you're telling a story. The next clip comes from a bit later on in our conversation, as you'll be able to see out the window. Check out how Grace spontaneously starts playing her saxophone on what had to be the driest read ever. The majority of my influence does come from singers and when I'm playing on the sax, I'm always singing what I'm, I'm playing. And if I'm, adding, um, if I'm adding vibrato or anything, it, it's to have a very, um, you know, lyrical quality. <laughs> Little subtone in there, you know. Seriously, we had been talking for about an hour at that point, and the reed was just sitting on her mouthpiece the whole time, drying out. 
There were several great moments in our conversation, but one of the highlights that I really wanted to share with you was when Grace showed me this ear training exercise that she does and works on with her students. And I actually have a, a, an, a ear training exercise um, that that you sing, you sing it first, and then you literally play it right after. So so that cats can be on the plane, literally air playing sax. And this is something that I do if I don't have my axe with me and I'm mentally singing and going through it and like pressing the air sax buttons. I'll give you an example because that's the best thing to do. Basically, you're going to start on a note that's easily singable for you. I highly recommend that the cats record it so you remember what you sing and first take the rhythm out and keep it very simple and you're just focusing on intervals. It's an, it's an ear training interval exercise. So I'm going to take a concert B flat. And I'm gonna sing a phrase. Do 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 do. You wanna sing it with me? Do 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 do. Yeah, and and this is why I record it because sometimes people can't remember what they just sang. So keep it simple. Then the third time I would sing the same phrase and I would air play it. Like where is it on my horn? You know. Do 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 do. And then I would check myself. <laughs> So let's break that down. Step one is to give yourself a pitch reference on your instrument. Uh, here Grace plays a concert B flat, which is G on the saxophone. <laughs> Step two is to sing a phrase and record yourself. Just use your phone for this. Sing something simple. Don't worry about the rhythms. Just focus on the notes. So Grace sang, do, 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 ba, ba. Step three is to sing the phrase again, but this time finger the notes that you think you're singing on the saxophone. Ba, da, ba, da. Step four is to play what you fingered and check yourself to see if you got it right. <laughs> Grace goes on to show us a few ways you can develop this as you get more and more advanced. If this is easy for you, you got good ears, start to do wider intervals, you know. Do, 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 do. Let's try that one together. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Start to integrate on a more advanced level chromatics. Do, 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 do. And you'll notice I'm actually playing it. All right, now it's getting a little bit tricky with all the chromatic notes, but let's give this one a try as well. Do 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 I recommend going really slow in the beginning. Remember, focus on just the notes. Take your time. Don't worry about the rhythms. So now when I talk about air playing, I can actually just be, you know, without a saxophone, but for now you'll see it, and I'm going to sing, and I'm going to play, and then I'm going to see if I did it correctly. Um, do, 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 da, da, da. This next one is pretty tough, but let's try it together. Do, do, do. Do 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 Grace goes ahead and does a few more. I'll let you work on those on your own. Have fun. You really 
think of it as an ear training exercise and it helps to get all the intervals locked in and to hear this is a very slow process for me in the beginning of I had so many ideas up here and I couldn't get them onto my horn so slowing it way down working on it for like five minutes a day and then getting your ear training together so that you can get here to here there it is again slowing things way down something I talk about a lot on this channel and just practicing a concept for five minutes a day. Stuff like this can be really hard at first. And what often happens is we'll start practicing it, get frustrated and kind of give up on it. Think of like playing overtones. Who has tried to learn to play their overtones, got nowhere in the first try and then gave up on it, said, that's not for me. So instead of trying to master something like this in one practice session, Instead, spend five minutes on it a day. Over time, you'll make tremendous progress. You can always challenge yourself because if this ever starts to get easy, just make it a two bar phrase. Like mm. see, then you're starting to, to challenge your how much you can remember or just make the intervals harder or make more chromatics within it. So it's never ending. I thoroughly enjoyed my meeting with Grace. I'm gonna be working on this ear training exercise because it's fantastic. Uh, I love the content she's putting out on Instagram, on YouTube, and other platforms, make sure you go follow her there because if you're not following Grace Kelly, you're really missing out. Um, she's also touring around with her band, so if she comes to your town, don't miss the show. I've put links in the description below to make it easier for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next video. Melody is just, I just love Melody so much and yeah. I just love being able to express it lyrically through the horn. I think whether it's bends or growls or vibrato, there's so many tones, you know. And knowing how to do, you, you separate all of the elements and you practice them individually so that you don't fall into a habitual patterns. You know, I noticed with some students, I also fell into this before I realized I was doing it, I would continually scoop into notes, right? So, and then it was Lee Conans that said to me, all right, so play a whole chorus without scoops, and I couldn't do it. Mm. So it's by taking away those elements yeah. and then learning, okay, I, I want to put in a scoop here and making it an actual, you know, a, a, a paintbrush in your toolbox moment. You make it a moment. Right.